We're in the middle of studying the story of Akidat Yitzchak, we're in Perak Bet, and we are dealing with a very strange uh, psukim about the moment when Avram Avinu is poised to carry out the Akedah, and lo and behold, an angel tells him, stop, don't keep going. What I want to see today are a few, um, a few sources uh, that will hopefully give us insight into the reality. We saw a little bit of this before already uh, in, a previ- in the previous year, uh, into the way in which Chazal were wise to the fact that it was a Malach who told us uh, to hold, told Avram Avinu to stop. And yet at the same time, the reality that uh, God himself uh, uh, had set him out on the journey. So in the conflict between uh, the boss and the employee, uh, uh, between the, the, the master and the servant, between the creator and the created, so who are you supposed to listen to? It's so obvious who it's supposed to, uh, how, how it's supposed to go. And in fact, we saw last time the matters itself is engaging the question of what the responses of Avram Avinu were when the uh, Malach initially came to him. He was not, uh, you know, sanguine about just uh, staying his hand. First, he, he argued against the Malach. Who are you? And what are you saying? And what do you claim? Yeah. So um, I think there is there is something uh, here for us to uh, uh, process, to see more uh, in depth, and to try to unpack. Uh, we saw again one of the sources we looked at last time was in the world of the Medrash of Medrash Raba, Breshit Raba, uh, and the Medrash Tanchuma, Excuse me. Um, and uh, there are parallel sources also in um, in, in Medrash uh, uh, Rabbah, uh, one of which we will see uh, uh, today. So uh, to get into it, I'm going to put some uh, sources on the screen. Uh, we, I don't think we have to belabor the point to go look again inside the uh, the Chumash and the Pesukim. We know which Pesukim it is, right? It's uh, exactly when uh, the angel calls out to him. Uh, it's verse uh, te- 11 and 12, Pasuk Yod Aleph. Uh, pasuk uh, uh, yud bet, and and the puzzle is is before us. Uh, and again, to underscore that, uh, as we saw already last time, Chazal saw that there was an issue here, uh, and they didn't uh, they didn't take it lightly. They didn't dismiss it. They did engage it. Now we might not always agree with uh, uh, our, uh, our our sense of how things should go. Uh, doesn't it doesn't feel like it agrees with our our, our uh, thought process for ourselves? Like I, that's not what I expect. Is not but. It's an approach that Chazal had, and today we're going to see some other approaches, not only from Chazal, but from some later commentators, how they uh, viewed these particular uh, psukim and what they augur uh, in terms of our understanding generally of the um, about the Akeda and maybe some enduring uh, enduring lessons. I'm also going to state at the outset, just so we don't get ourselves into trouble, that uh, there will not be a shear uh, next week. Uh, but the following week, on July 12th, uh, God willing, there will be a shear again. So we're skipping next week, and we'll be back on the on the 12th uh, during the during the nine days. So just uh, no one should be uh, whatever the word is. I don't know, confused. Uh, coming on next week and they're upset. We came for nothing. So uh, you get schar halicha for going on your on your system as well. So that's that's also uh, uh, worthy, worthwhile. Okay. Let me uh, let me put some things on the screen. Firstly, wait before oh, before already a question. Go ahead. Yeah, real quick. Last week when you talked about the te- uh, Medrash Tanchuma, you said uh, the Medrash said that Yitzchak was a very uh, active part of this by saying, "Bind my arms and my legs so that I don't create a moon by moving, yeah, moving or what have you." Yeah. Okay. What? Where does the where does the Medrash get there from the Pesukim? How does it see it from the the, the word? The, the, it says in the pshat. It says it says vayakod. Uh, 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 the word akida akeda means a binding. Be fine, but vayakod it's yitzchak. So Abraham did the action. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So the, well, the, 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 yeah. Well, how does it know that Yitzchak was the one who who said that? His father was an participant in yeah, this. Not clear. Not clear. Not to me. I don't see a hint in the pshat to it. I don't. That doesn't mean anything. Just because I don't see it doesn't mean it's not there. But um, I don't know. Okay. When I say when I don't know, I, I like to say I, I don't know. So. No, no, no. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, okay. So let's um, let's look at some of the sources inside. Firstly, and someone tipped me off uh, last Thursday when we were learning in the Navi Shear that uh, there is already an ongoing Shear in a work called Pirkei Rebbe Yezer. It's a midrashic work. 
Uh, it's authored all or mostly by Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkonos, who was one of the Rebbeim of uh, Akiva, Rabbi Akiva. So he's an important Tanaitic uh, Chacham. He's a, he's a Tana. Uh, and uh, he wrote a, a commentary, uh, which again, we, I say every time we talk about anything in the world of Madrash, we simply do not know, and I would argue deliberately so. We are not told when uh, a, a Chacham is using a creative impulse and when they're transmitting a, uh, a, 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 a tradition that comes to us from earlier on. You'll say, how could that be? Of course, we should and we must know. Uh, and the answer seems to be, no, we don't need to know entirely. And uh, some things have more of a feel of being a received tradition. And some things can be perfectly comfortable saying it was a creative impulse of the Tana or Tanoim or of Chachamim in some generation who came up with it. The Rambam engages at the beginning of his introduction to the uh, to the Mishnah, where he points out that many midrashim contradict other midrashim, and you don't have to tie yourselves in knots to try to reconcile every single midrash with every single other midrash. Sometimes they're literally contradicting one with the other. That's okay. They're working on multiple uh, multiple channels, if you will. Uh, they're both true. They're both expressing another kind of truth. Ah, there can only be one historical truth. Yeah, but sometimes knowing which one is the historical truth denudes the Torah of an extra layer of meaning. And I gave you, we, uh, not I gave you, we saw an example of that when it came to how old is Yitzchak? The Torah does not say explicitly there are hints in one direction, hints in another direction. You could see both of them and they're not, and, and you don't have to vote that it has to be one or the other. Uh, historically, which one was it? What I said before, we don't know. So here's the version of the story of the Akedah told as told by Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkonus, obviously has to be grounded in what's in the in the Torah itself, in the Torah Shibichtav, but the Torah Shibal Peh, I just explained this to someone on a Friday, a non-Jewish person, actually, I was engaging in a conversation. Uh, it's a long story why and how, but uh, someone who was not Jewish was asking me about uh, what is this book you have called Talmud? And I was, you know, smiling, well, I'll explain to you, you know, it's uh, hundreds and hundreds of years of conversation and discussion, but its core is it's the soul of the Torah. It's the oral tradition whose core comes to us from Mount Sinai. So they were trying to understand. So is everything that's ever spoken in there, you claim was spoken on Sinai? And my answer was obviously, you know, well, sort of. What do you mean sort of? Yes or no? It's like, uh, it's sort of, because the basic principles of interpretation are also given at Har Sinai, and then Loba Shemaim, he given over to the humanity, et cetera, and I was trying to watch my words so that it wouldn't be misunderstood. I hope it wasn't misunderstood by this person who's not Jewish, doesn't have any concept with Torah Shabbat Peh, as they say, Bible equals a religious text. Everything else is, you know, I said, no, there were people like that. That's the Sadducees and so on and so forth. So here we're learning from the words of Rabbi Eliezer ben Horkonos and the Pirkei Rabbi Eliezer, it's a midrashic work. It's not medrash halacha, it's medrash agada. There, were, there are medrash halacha svarim, like the mechilta, the mechilta de Rajbi, the mechilta de Rabbi Ishmael, Rabbi Ishmael, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Rabbi Eliezer, all tanoim, all from the era of the Mishnah. I'll quote it in various Mishnayot. Uh, and in the case of uh, Rabbi Eliezer, uh, he was one of the rabbeim, as I said, of Rabbi Akiva. So look with me at this uh, this story. The Pirkei Rabbi Eliezer takes as a given, by the way, that uh, he's that Yitzchak is 37. When he goes to Har Moriah, we explain, we talked about why that might be. Uh, Yishmael is 50 years old. We saw this already. Uh, there was a competition, a tacharut between Eliezer and Yishmael. Who's going to take it over? Okay, they get there three days. We can't read every single line of this. So I'm focusing now just on when they actually get up to the um, to the to the conversation between them. The wood uh, 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 was placed on uh, Yitzchak. Again, you're going to put a pile of wood on a six-year-old child, a 10-year-old child, a 13-year-old child. It's not the same thing as 37-year-old. He's, uh, he's a man. Uh, so he's, uh, he's carrying the bags, if you will. His father is uh, well over 100. So what do you want? Right, he takes the fire, means whatever they're going to use the fire material, the um, the, the knife, uh, they're going together. So, the exact quote of the Pasuk, and we saw this part already in Pikachu earlier. You are the lamb. So, according to the matter, at least told him directly, Amar Rabbi Yishmael, not Yishmael, but Amar Rabbi Yishmael. 
Kevin she gila otomakum, her ahu a kodesh baruchu beats bel avram, but amarlo zehu amis beach. When they got to the place, Hashem showed it to Avram with a finger, so to speak. He pointed it to him, right? Pointed out to him. He said to him, Hu amis beach, shahaya adam harish and makri vomikoda. This is the altar upon which Adam Harishan, the first man, used in order to offer an offering. This is ex- exactly the spot of Kain and Hevel. This is the spot, right? Noach and his children. And it says specifically he built the altar. The altar implies it's a known altar. Incidentally, this is very rare, but the Rambam, of all things, in Hilchot Beta Bechira, in his halachot about the Beta Mikdash, opens the second chapter by telling us the history of the Mizbeach, and lo and behold, he gives us this history. He tells us the Mizbeach was the place of Adam Arishon, and the Kain and Hevel, and Noach, etc. Uh, actually, I don't know if mentions Kain and Hevel. He definitely mentions Adam and Noah. He might have skipped Akai and Hevel, but the point is still clear and it goes through. So the Akeda, everything is there. And then David comes there in Yushalayim and he's shown the spot, etc. So, Amar Yitzchak Avram Aviv. Avi, Kashrenu Ukshor Shtei Adayu Shtei Raglai, Bishvil Pshiyuta, Vansim Chalel, Kabedet Avicha. So here, the idea is that Yitzchak says to his father, tie me up my hands and my legs because I'm worried about negligence and I will have violated not something about the mitzvah of giving a korban without a, uh, a blemish, but rather kabedet avicha. I will have not respected my father. I have not done my father's will because I, I, uh, I flinched. Yeah, the, the, the perush of Radal, Rav David Luria here says that in another uh, work of Madras, the Psikta, it says that it, I will not be a Korban anymore because I will be have a blemish, the Korban. Here it was something different. Here it was about respecting my father. Uh, Avram tied his hands and his uh, legs. He put him upon the Mizbeach. And he laid out the fire and the wood. And he uh, arranged him on top of it. He placed his um, his uh, uh, his leg uh, really on his his, his knee. He means he he put his weight on him like he put his knee down on top of Yitzchak uh, Avinu. Uh, uh, I believe there's a, I think it looks this way in the Rembrandt portrait of the arcade. I could be wrong about that, and I, I do not know offhand but uh, it could be that Rembrandt uh, had access to Midrashim, translated into his language, et cetera, it was not unheard of in antiquity, uh, excuse me, in the Middle Ages, that they had sources from antiquity translated into, um, into their lingua franca, uh, such as it was, whether it was Latin or whatever, whatever it was, um, you know, so Rembrandt had access to it. Vishalach et yadov he stretched out his hand, he took the blade, shenem of ishlach, avram et yadov lishchot et beno, uchekoin gado. And he was like a high priest. So really has been working drawing the parallel to Avoda, to serving Hashem as a high priest would, right? He was giving his, uh, the mincha is the meal offering, the nisko is the, the libation, right? But now here's the part where we got to hold on. I saw a comment coming, but give me one minute. And the Holy and Blessed Be He was sitting, as it were, in Shemayim. And he saw a father binding, binding and a son who was bound with all of their heart, right? B'cholev. V'shalach yado, he stretched out his hand. L'itod ha'machalet, he stretched out his hand to take the blade, the knife. Malach asharet, the ministering angels, the ministering angels are so'akim uvochim. They're screaming and crying. Shanamar hein er elam, so a verse in the book of Yeshayo about this type of angels, the Er Elim, they're screaming outside, uh, they're crying out, uh, bursting forth, and the angels of peace are, are crying bitterly. The angels are screaming. the universe. You're supposed to be compassionate and, and full of grace, that your compassion extends to all of your creation. Rachem al Yitzchak, Shu Adam, Uven Adam. Yitzchak is a child, a child, the son of a child. Uh, 
Look how he's being treated like an animal. He's tied up like an animal. And yet, doesn't the Pasuk say, right? Uh, 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 you save hu human beings and animals. God, you save all creatures. The Malachim are quoting to Hillam. Now, again, you can say, our Malachim quoting to Hillam. Well, very simply, because to Hillam, of course, of course, exists in Shemayim in an ethereal sense. So they have access to all of Tanakh before humanity does. So they can quote whatever they want. Alternatively, Rabbi Yezir ben Horkinus knows to Hillam backwards and forwards, and he either uh, is saying it himself or he's bringing it up from an earlier source that one of his Rebbeim taught him that that's what that Pasuk means. Uh, if he didn't take it from a, a creative perspective, it was received, or David Amelech is hinting to this in Sefer Tehillim, and that was the received tradition. Any of those, uh, in my view, are legitimate. Which one is correct? Doesn't matter. And when you hear doesn't matter the first time, it's shocking. What do you mean doesn't matter? Doesn't matter. The point is, isn't this part of our tradition? So these angels are crying out, you know, this flies in the face of, you're not supposed to say everybody. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, at the moment when the knife touched his neck. So if you look in the Torah, Shibich Tav in the written Torah, did the knife touch his neck? Never. But according to the Medrash, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda says, ah, really, it did touch his neck. Now it didn't cut him, but it cut his, it touched his neck. At that moment, Parachav Yatz Nishmata So Yitzchak. Yitzchak's soul left his body. He died. The Kevin Shi Shmiya Kolomi Bain Shnea Kruvim, the Amar Al Tishlach Yadcha El Hanaar. Once his voice was heard from between the two uh, 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 cherubs, right? Where are these cherubs? Were they built yet? Of course not. But in Shemayim, right, the sound of the voice that comes from between uh, the, 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 the Kruvim. Right, that exists also in some supernal realm. It already exists. So the, the voice and kolo means the voice actually of, uh, of Hashem. Yeah. But another way of saying this is that it wasn't the voice of Hashem. It was rather who speaks for Hashem, the Malach Hashem. So Kevin Shishmiya Kolo mi Vamar Al Tishlach Yadcha El Hanar. Do not stretch your hand out against the against the uh, the lad. If you look in the Pshat. If you look in the Pshat, Vaikra Elav Malach Hashem Min Hashemaim, Vayomer Abraham Abraham, Vayomer Hineni. An angel of God called out to Abraham from heaven and he said to him, Avram, Avraham. He called his name twice. What did Avram say back? Hineni, behold, I am here. Look at Pasukit Bet. Who spoke the next sentence? Vayomer, according to the Pshat, that's the Malach Hashem. According to this story, however, who spoke it? Hashem spoke it. Vayomer al tishlach yadcha el hanar. What was it going to say? Vayomer Hashem mi ben shnei akruvim. Hasn't been written yet. Vayomer Hashem? No. Vayomer. So you'll say to me, Rabbi, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. But why didn't you say Vayomer Hashem? That would have solved all our problems. But it doesn't say that, which implies the malach Hashem. And the answer is, point well taken. Didn't Rabbi Yehuda know that too? Isn't he answering that problem as well? He's saying, no, it was hidden. That's the point. We'll say, Rabbi Yehuda, excuse me. Why is Hashem talking in the third person? If God is the one speaking to him, why say, now I know that you're Yure Elohim? It's Hashem speaking. Okay, the answer, Rabbi Yehuda might say, yeah, look in multiple psukim in the Torah. You do have this, uh, this uh, syntax uh, as well. It exists. It's not the first time. Look in the Ten Commandments. Uh, after the first two, which are in the direct voice, Anochi, I am Hashem, your God, and thou shalt not have other gods before me. The third one is, do not take God's name in vain. Many of the Rishonim think Hashem is still speaking, but he withdrew the way he spoke. First was frontal, direct, speaking directly to the people, but then HaKadosh Baruch Hu withdraws somewhat, even within the Aserna Dibur, and refers to himself in the third person. Others don't like it. They say, no, that's not what it means. It means that only the first two were spoken by Hashem, that's Rav Simloy's Drosh in the Gemara in Masachet Makot. The first two were spoken by Hashem. The other eight were really spoken by Moshe in the name of Hashem. Why? The people couldn't take it. They said to Moshe, stop, stop, right? Torah tziva lanu Moshe. Moshe commanded us Torah. Moshe commanded us Torah is numerological value 611. Two mitzvahs God spoke. The other 611 straight from Moshe. We've seen this many, many times, yeah? So you can make the same argument over here that uh, uh, maybe Hashem speaks, Vayomer, Al Tishlagad Chalanar, 
They have to answer. So why didn't say Hashem? Got it. Rabbi Huda says no. So that's what happened. And then why did it revert to the third person? So spoke directly, but already there was a a, a, um, a withdrawal that was uh, going on. If you want a good basic example that'll uh, make your your head spin, but since I'm already making everyone's head spin, I'll throw this out as well. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam. Blessed are you, God. You, talking directly to Hashem, so to speak. It's if Hashem was, right? Who is our God, who is the Melech and the master of the universe. Shehakol Nye Bidvaro. That everything came into being through His word. Shouldn't it say Shehakol Nye Bidvarecha? Understand? If the beginning, if you know the Hebrew syntax, you start in the first, in the second person. Blessed are you, Hashem. So talking directly to Hashem. Elokeinu, our God, we have a relationship. Melech HaOlam, you're the master of the universe. Mentioning Melech HaOlam is already distancing things a little bit. Shehakol nihye bidvaro. Everything came into being by his word. So this is not my idea. The Rajba in a tshuva mentions this. The Ramban hints to this in Parshat B'Shalach, that sometimes the voice, so to speak, of HaKadosh Baruch, even in the same sentence, or how we refer to Hashem, is going through this constant oscillation of closer and farther away, closer and farther away. It's referred to as this idea that you find a pasuk in uh, Sefer Yechezkel that uses this language of Ratzov Ashov, like the angels are always surging forward and relenting, surging forward and withdrawing. And there's an oscillation that remains constant. Um, I missed the question. Transcends and intimates back and forth. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. But whereas the halls of academia in the world of philosophy calls it transcendence is, is distance and imminence is how close Hashem is, uh, we would refer to it as ratso vashov, ratso vashov, uh, 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 um, uh, surging forward and returning, surging forward and returning. Yeah. So what do we find here? The voice came out from between the two kruvim and it said, al tishlach yad elanar. Uh, right? So now watch what happens next. Chazra nefesh legufo. And at that moment, uh, Yitzhak Avinu is reanimated. He comes back to life. He tiro. And uh, Avram Avinu releases him, and he stood up on his own two legs. Vera'a, some say, v'yada Yitzhak, tchiyat hametim in Torah. He experienced the first tchiyat hametim. He was resuscitated from the dead. All of the dead in the future will come back to life. But Otasha, at exactly that moment, Patach the Omar, he said right away, Baruch Hashem, Hametim. Blessed are you, God, the one who resuscitates the dead. Meaning, in this story of the Pirkei de Beliezer's rendering, was the, uh, was the Akedah successful? Successful. When I say successful, I mean as a test, I mean as an actual sacrifice of Yitzchak. Did Avram actually slaughter his son? No. But did Yitzchak actually die, according to this rendering of it? Yes. And he came back to life. And therefore, every time you dive in the Shemon Esrei, from henceforth, the first bracha, not accidentally, ends with the two words, Magain Avraham, the shield of Avraham, because the first bracha is about all of the Avot, but all of the Avot are contained within one individual, Avram Avinu, therefore, Elokei Avram, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov, the bracha is called Avot Patriarchs, but it ends not Baruch HaTashem, Magain Avot, but Baruch HaTashem, Magain Avraham, shield of Avram, because everything is contained in Avraham, that progenitor of all of the rest of the nation. The second bracha, is the bracha that focuses on the most natural, the most unnatural, God who sustains life and who resuscitates the dead. And according to Pekir Debeliezer, the history of it, the first time it's ever recited, again, you'll say to me, oh yeah, come on. The Chachamim were the ones who wrote that bracha. The Anshe Knesset Gdola, that's what the Gemara says. It doesn't say Yitzchak wrote it. Yes, the Chachamim and the Gemara wrote that it was Anshe Knesset Gdola who set up the prayer. But is it impossible that there was an antecedent in history? Pekir says, no, not only not impossible, that's exactly what happened. Baruch Atah Hashem Chayim Eitim, that a Jew says every day, is actually with an antecedent. Who? Yitzchak Avinu, the first Jew who actually experienced a Tchiat HaMetim. He came back from the dead. Ah, come on, it doesn't say it in the Pshat? No, it doesn't say it in the Pshat. Is it part of Torah? Yes, it's part of Torah. Could I dispute it and say, I don't like this Madrash because I don't, I don't want to accept it? Does, if it says it didn't touch him, then it didn't touch him? You could say that. Rabbi Leazar ben Horkinos, quoting from Rabbi Yehuda, said, I don't accept it. I accept instead that actually he died. He came back to life. Karen's first. And then I think Helen's waiting on the phone. Karen first was waiting with her hand up. Say, Helen, give me one minute. Uh, Karen, go ahead. Sure. I was just, as you were doing that, I was thinking when we say shield of Abraham, if we use the Akita as the theme for those first two brachas, would the shield then be the Malach? 
who shielded him. Hashem shielded Abraham from completing the act, and yet he got the merit of completing the act because Yitzhak died and then... Okay, could be, could be, <laughs> but, but my hesitation about it is that the word magain is actually explicitly in the Torah at the beginning of Perak Tedvav, chapter 15 in the Torah. It actually mm -hmm. says, God said to Abraham, Anochi magain lach, I am your shield. Could it also be Akeda? Hadn't the thought of it. As well. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, I mean, why not? But it's still alive. It's still his life. It's still happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Helen, uh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> this Shabbos, I found out in the footnote that Mashor Sov Shoalim in Kedusha is attributed to uh, Pirkei de Eliezer. And so I see that he is very involved with Malachim and understanding Malachim. Fair enough. But I find this measure very harmful because the shot says the Ma'achelis is up in the air. Now for we to inflect and put in various other thoughts that the, that the knife touched Yitzchok's neck is highly harmful and dangerous because it could be somewhere along the line incorporated in our canon. And that makes it very dangerous regarding the purity of understanding the pshat. Perfectly spoken. I have no comment except to say amen. And I'm sure that people on this call, the reading this matter, say, come on. By the way, well, Shelly, I'll take you in one second. I just follow up to what Helen said. I think I mentioned this last time, so forgive me for repeating it. I, the, the, there's a very famous uh, uh, Torah from the Kotzka, Rabbi really, Menachem Mendel of Kotzk, who says that the test of the Akeda, I, I think I did mention this last time, the test of the Akeda ultimately was Avram was basically saying, please, let me just put a little nick in him, a little something to say that I was Yotze. And the Malach says, no, nothing, zero, zilch. The real test here is can you stop yourself in the moment of your religious zeal? This sort of fits with our fourth, our past and forthcoming parsha to Shavuah. Uh, yeah, the real test is you want to do it because you think that's the mitzvah, but then Shem says, stop. Do you have the power to withhold? Or it is a passionate uh, and zeal of the moment uh, you've already sort of psyched yourself out. Has that taken on a life of its own? The Kotzker said the test here was now. And that's why it's in two different psukim. The Kotzker says when he when he spoke to him and he says, it says he called his name, Hineni, Alti and then it says, why now? Why did it say now? Now means because he saw that Avram did not ignore the word of the Malach, but he stopped himself. He stayed his hand from actually uh, 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 cutting his son at all. And therefore, now I know. We thought it meant, now I saw you were ready to go through with it. Okay, it showed it to me. The Kotzker said it's in that passage. Don't send your hand against him and don't do it. And that's why it doubled, by the way. If you look at Rashi right here, right here. Right. Al tishlach, Rashi, lishchot, don't slaughter him. Amarlo, in came the chinam bati lekan. Avram said to the Malach, then I came here for nothing. Sebo chavala, let me do a little injury to him. Votzim adam, let me just have a little bloodletting. Amarlo said the angel to him, al tas lemauma, al tas bomum, don't make any blemish on him, nothing, not one little bit. And the minute when that happened, and he didn't do it, the Kotzker says, that's that's when the Malach said the second half of the sentence. Now I know that you fear God. Yeah. Okay, Shelly, you're waiting patiently. Sorry. Go ahead. Sure. Shelly, unmute. I don't hear you. Okay, I'm going to ask you something about the Shmona Esrei, that the Ne'amon Atol Lahachayot Meitim, Baruch Atah Hashem Mechaye Hameitim. Why is it Meitim and Hameitim? This has been bothering me for years since I've been davening at home. And how does it have to do with this Pirkei de Rebbe Eliezer? And I don't like Pirkei de Rebbe Eliezer. I'm studying him and there's just too much stuff that just makes my hair stand on end. This one is actually one of the uh, less bothersome got it, ones. Got it, yeah. Like but Na'ar shouldn't be a 37 year old when the angel says Na'ar. So I, I have to go with the other kinds of guys. But okay. why May team and how May team? You're in good, you're in good standing on the, the latter point. So I won't engage it because again, 
you know, we saw previously the Ibn Ezra says, if I have to accept it, I will. But to me, it doesn't make sense that he was actually 37. From the Ibn Ezra said that, right? Mm -hmm. Other than also, I didn't show you, but there are others who hold, oh, he's a little kid. Of course, Yoshua is still being called a Nar when he's fully gro a grown man and already a commander in chief of the, of the army. So we go. Yeah. Now, Vinevanat Lahachiot Meiti means the, 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 um, uh, what's the word? Uh, the, the, um, it, it's part of the, the syntax. You, you, you are uh, a faithful, i.e., trustworthy, uh, that you will resuscitate. Resuscitate dead means the, the class of people who are in there. But Baruch Hashem Chai Hametim, it's like Baruch Hashem Chonein Hadaat. It's in the summation syntax. It's just the, the feature of the language. Could it be referring to? Could the Hametim be referring to uh, Yitzchak? Also, but it's all. I mean, well, that's what the, that's what this Medrash wants to say. See, that's the problem, Shelley. You and me, we like certain parts of the Medrash, not the others. Can you keep half and not the other half? I don't know, but. But that's that's what this matters is saying that he, he said Baruch Hashem Chaya Hametim the dead. It's already a class of people that exists, dead but not gone. You know what I mean? Because okay, so I'm wondering if if the if the people who made this prayer are going back and and so the, did they deliberately think it was Yitzchak when they said Hametim? We don't know. Eliezer says that Yitzchak was the was the was the one who wrote this brach. The the the, the Baruch Atah Hashem part was written already by Yitzchak. Oh, okay. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Um, Wait. You know, I have a question. Yeah, please. So should go ahead. So you said that this is the proof that uh, Kedas Yitzchak was successful. The fact that Yitzchak died and then he was brought back to life, or the fact For that he died. Rabbi yes. That's they, it. For the Kotzker. It's that he didn't touch him one iota and the Kotzker doesn't get involved with whether or not it's like die, didn't die. Right, well, because well, what, did it. who cares? In other words, what's the relevance of the death? The death itself isn't, it's the, it's the, um, okay. Bringing a Korban, it's yeah. the action of Abraham. Yes. The yes. What does death or not death have to do with anything? Oh, I'm glad you brought it up. Hmm. Almost like perfectly planned over here. Hmm. says the Gemara Masechetanit. The Gemara Masechetanit deals with crisis. And for Jewish people, the, the, the most likely crisis living in Eretz Yisrael is not war, but is actually drought uh, as a, and, and, and rainfall and produce in the field uh, uh, as a barometer of how we're doing spiritually and morally. The Torah makes mention of this and, uh, repeatedly and very prominently. It's the second paragraph of the Shema. Ene Hashem Lokecha. Uh, Hashem is always looking at, as it were, the land of Israel. Um, and um, Masechetani uh, points out that if there will be a big crisis, uh, the people have to fast and they come to a certain point after a number of fasts, they may find themselves in a place, a position rather, where they have to make a big ceremony. And in this ceremony, they go outside, take the Sefer Torah outside in a little Aron Kodesh, and they place uh, um, uh, uh, ashes not only on top of the Aron Kodesh and they daven, but they place ashes on their own heads. Ask the Gemara of Lama Notin Efe Barosh Kol Echad Ve'echad. Why do they put ashes on each other's, on, on their heads? Pligi Ba Rabbi Levi Bar Cham Rabbi Hanina. There's an argument between these two Chachamim of the Gemara, of, of these two Amoraim. Chadamar one says, Hare Anu Chashuvin L'Fanacha Ke'efer. One says, to remind you, God, we are like ashes before you. The other one says, V'chad Amar Kadeshi Yizkor Lano Efero Shal Yitzchak. It's so that Hashem will be reminded of the ashes of Yitzchak. My benayhu, what's the difference between these two? Ike benayhu, afar stam. The difference between afar and afar. Afar is ashes after something's been burned. Afar is just the, the, the soil, the dirt from the ground. So if you want to show God, look, we're putting ashes on our head, but really it's to show how lowly we are. So you don't need ashes. You could say we're like Avram said about himself, Banuchi Afar Va'efer. I am dust and ashes. So you could put the dust from the ground just as soon as you could use ashes. But according to the other opinion, the reason why you're putting ashes on your head is to remind us of, and it's very cryptic, Efaro Shal Yitzchak, the ashes of Yitzchak. What do you mean the ashes of Yitzchak? So the Mepharshim explain it's the substitution of the ram for Yitzchak becomes known as the ashes of Yitzchak from a spiritual perspective. Was Yitzchak sacrificed on Haramoria? Yes, he was. Physically? No. 
but spiritually, psychologically, you know, of course we could play this out for the other stories that many have in fact done this. What does it mean that, uh, that Yitzhak Avinu has very few things that he says? He seems to be very inward, very withdrawn. He's extremely, uh, what's the word, he's on a high level of Kedusha. He doesn't leave. He's the Ola Tamima. He doesn't leave Eretz Yisrael. Uh, and later on, he has the eye issues. You know that matters very, very well. Uh, the tears going into his eyes, right? So if you look in the Gemara Masechet Zvachim, we find in Masechet Zvachim, a very strange description here also, without getting into all of it, about uh, uh, also about uh, it's actually kind of a, a carryover to what we have from the um, from the world of uh, of Shmuel uh, Bet and going into Malachim Aleph. Uh, it's talking about the various uh, dimensions of the Mizbeach and it refers to the um, the Hamizbeach that's somehow a known altar that's going to be built. So doesn't it say that they have a um, the script Hakol Bichtav Miyad Hashem Alai Haskil? The idea that this David is giving the manuscript over to, to Shlomo. It's from God. It's uh, It's written from the hand uh, uh, of God, meaning that it came from Hashem. The plans, the blueprints for building the Mikdash. Elam of Yosef, Kra Ashkach Vidarash. It's that he looked in another Pasuk and he um, uh, uh, darshaned it. He, he, he explained it in a homiletic way. Vayomer David, Zehu Beit Hashem Ha'elokim, Vizemizbat Mizbeach Le'olal Yisrael. This is the house of Hashem. Uh, who is uh, the Lord, uh, and this is the altar that is to be used for elevation offerings for Israel. Kibai, just like the bayit, ma bayit, shishim ama af mizbeach shishim ama. As the the house will have a dimension of sixty cubits, so two sixty cubits, right? Bishlama bayit minkarat surato. Just as we know the dimensions of the house. So the Mizbeach, how do we know the dimensions of the Mizbeach? Amar Rabbi Lazar, Re'u Mizbeach Banui, they saw Mizbeach that was built, Michal Sar HaGadol, Omer Makri Valav, very strange, but they saw the Mizbeach built, some prophetic vision, and Michael, one of the ministering angels, the great angel, is standing and being offering offerings in front of it. Again, V-Day, what we talked about before, I mean, physically and literally, but it's the imagery that they see. Rav Yitzchak Nafcha Amar, Efro Shel Yitzchak Ra'u Shemunach Be'otom Akom, they saw the the image that they saw was of the ashes of Yitzchak that are placed in that place. And the supernal Mizbech on high, the spiritual Mizbech on high has a pile of, of ashes. And whose pile of ashes are those? Of Yitzchak. Same like the Gemara we had previously in Tanit. We have here, now where are they located? On the Mizbech in Yerushalayim Shalmala of which the Mizbech Yerushalayim Shalmata is built. In Parshat Vayigash, Vayizbach Zvachim Lokei Aviv Yitzchak, Yaakov Avinu, before he leaves the land of Israel, offers offerings to the God of his father Yitzchak. Rebrech Yamar, Enakosh Brok, Miachit Shmo, Al Beria, Shuchai, Ella, Al Baal, Bali Yisurin. God does not um, unify his name around a person when they are still alive in this world. Why? Various reasons. I'll give you one of them, very simple sounding reason, in case they mess things up and their legacy is tarnished. So we, they, until they die, that's when their account closes. That's when Hashem can be miyached his name, unify his name around them, except for one person, a person who suffers. A person who suffers, that individual may actually have Hashem, as it were, unify his name around them. Lefichach enktiv kan Yaakov, Therefore, it mentioned Yitzchak and not Yaakov, who had uh, Yaakov is uh, still alive. Yitzchak already died. Rabbi Brechi Amar Uchre Shehaya Bal Yisurin. Otherwise, you can say it's because he suffered a lot. Rabbanan Amri, the sages say, Roim Efro Shal Yitzchak Kiilu Tzabro Gavim Yisbech Lekach Yitzchak Yitzchak. It's as if the ashes, ki'ilu, the ashes of Yitzchak are uh, gathered there on the Mizbeach, on the altar, and therefore Yitzchak was mentioned. Uh, the idea that he offered offerings to the God of his father, of his father uh, Yitzchak, Davka, because even Yaakov offering his offerings, when he sees the ashes, what ashes did he, sig- did he signify? As if it's the ashes of his father Yitzchak on the Mizbeach, which Mizbeach, the Mizbeach that Yaakov even built before he left Right, Vayigash. So what we have here is the idea that the ashes of Yitzchak are, are symbolically uh, either on, on the Mizbeach on high, 
what we, oh, excuse me, either alternatively, what we want to signal Hashem, we put ashes on ourselves to remind him of the ashes of Yitzchak, so to speak, that were substituted at the moment of the, uh, of the Akeda with the ram. Number two, the ashes reflect the ashes that still exist in a supernal sense. And the supernal Mizbech means outside of the realm of physicality in Shemayim, Mizbech and Shemayim. Thirdly, other people who will make Mizbech and offer offerings will see the ashes that they have in front of them as recalling the ashes of Yitzchak Avinu. Yaakov himself recalling the ass of his father. Obviously, he didn't think his father was incinerated on the at, on the altar. Who was his father? Yeah, clear. But the idea that symbolically that's what he sees and that's what impacts him when he um, when he encounters it uh, as such. So um, we're gonna stop here because we're out of time because uh, I don't want to open the next issue, which is going to be the shift from Velo Kimnisa to a mal stopping Avram Avinu. That will come to, not next week, but the week after, uh, on whatever it is, Monday, July 12, I think it is, uh, God willing, uh, if all goes well. Uh, we'll pick it up there, and then we'll continue our, our learning at that time. Let me stop here uh, and wish everyone all the best. If anyone has questions or comments, I'm happy to entertain them. But I know for those who have to get off the call to get to another shear, I don't want to keep you. Uh, and I have someone coming in, so that's also a feature. Any comments, questions for the conclusion? Mate, you know, I'm always, I always bother you the last minute. I apologize. Not a bother. Is there any, is there any value in the unexpected? Like every day, if I find a good parking spot, I say, be he made the air mine. And then that, that was an unexpected thing right. that happened. Right. Then the, the lepers come to the enemy camp, they're not there. Is there any value in this story about hoping for an unexpected ending that would work for you in regarding that the angel stopped Abraham? Okay, yeah. The you point know, here though is that unlike the Be'er Mayim, unlike the Mitzorayim who find the camp empty, here, it's actually Hashem talking to him, or at least a Malach Hashem, and then Hashem, uh, or just a Malach Hashem, we're going to see that next time, speaking directly with Avon Vinu. So it is unexpected, but it's also contradicting what planned. happened before. Yeah, it's planned, it's planned up on high. Yeah. It's yeah. not oh, unexpected. Sure. That, that's always true. Yeah, that's true. But the Be'er Mayim is also planned on high. Yes, but it's much more subtle because it's very easy to just say, oh, found a, oh, found a well. Oh, the camp happens to be empty. That's left yeah. more to us to have the work. Uh, the, our work is to say, oh, it's from Hashem. I don't know how the mechanism works, but it works somehow. Here, it's literally a malach sp speaking to him. That's what the pshat says. The literal oh. rendering. The pshat and Sefer Breshit is, an angel spoke to him. He has the knife out. What? He's having a conversation with a malach. Now, I imagine that malach is, you know, it says mina shemaim. So I was imagining it's up, but it could have been lateral as well. Shemaim, as we know, is not truly uh, above us in the physical sense. Right. Right, but all around us, it's another dimension. That's all. Okay, that's all I have time for okay, today. Thank you. Wish everyone okay. all the best. Thanks for joining today.